sort of sand or gravel that they extracted. And that was uh, on a tax of two pounds a tonne at the end of the, when the scheme ended. And the fact is that there were stipulated requirements for them to get that um, tax relief, particularly when you were dealing with very sensitive environmental areas like Loch Ney or the River Fawn. And, and that was that you would have planning permission and you would, you would be complying with environmental law. And when I looked at, uh, I was studying environmental law after I retired, doing a master's to try and protect the Fawn, and I discovered that these, these payments were being made out to operators that, in the case of Loch Ney, did not have any planning permissions, were not complying with environmental law. Uh, in the case of... That's basic stuff that should have happened and they should have maybe... People should have been checking that, you know, before you pay out and something, you know, did they do the work? Have they got the, the qualifications? Did they put on all the safeguards? None of that. Well, it, no, it, well, this is it. it. It did to an extent because what, what I did is I, like yourself, became then suspicious of what was going on. And uh, so I asked to inspect the aggregates levy credit scheme files and what I discovered in those was that they knew that they needed to comply and they knew they weren't complying. So the people within the department that were charged with ensuring that there was this compliance were saying, we're not compliant, we can't give this certificate, we can't give this tax relief because they're not compliant. But then what you would see was, how do we find a way about this? So let's go and look at so they're not complying there, but are they complying with another element, maybe on the land here? Um, and they go and they look, well, actually, no, we can't do that either. But in, eventually they found some way of paying this money. Now this was, in Loch Ney, it could have been up, it's estimated by the audit office themselves to be up over 16 million pounds in Maboy, where it was paid out as well. Um, the department, even on, on that file, the department had issued a letter expressing their delight that the um, Maboy uh, operators were complying with the aggregates levy credit scheme. So people were being paid money for for illegally dumping waste in Maboy. Well, they weren't. They weren't being paid the illegally dump waste, but they were being paid tax relief on the extra what they were extracting from the site. But right. while they were stuffing the holes with the waste, so. It was that so very much so I did I raised that issue for instance I, as an external whistleblower with the audit office and they did a quite a detailed report which they have never issued but the so I don't know what's in that have they given any reasons why they haven't issued the report or the, the reasons they gave was that uh, events had superseded and that the, the likes of friends of the earth had uh, taken a judicial review and there was a court case ongoing uh, one of the reasons I got recently was that they now couldn't recoup the money because of the passage of time. But what what I do know from correspondence between me and the audit office at the time was that they had confirmed that having inspected the files, they had reached the same conclusions that I had reached. So I can only assume that they had serious concerns at that time, but it's never really been addressed in the sense that it's been out in the public as to what went on. So from that perspective, that was a, a, a that was that was probably one of the more successful whistleblowing cases that I was involved in because the the others that I've raised, at least I was taken seriously to yeah, an extent. They agreed we, with your findings, they agreed and they, with and your they analysis. Ca- and they carried out an investigation. Been, and they've never recouped the money. Is there is there any mm-hmm. other detrimental than the public waste of, of or a waste of public money? Well, is there well, is there any, you know, uh, your concerns for anything else regarding it, regarding the environment, or well, that 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 was my basic concern at the time was that they they were not complying with environmental law, and here we're talking about the environmental impact assessment regulations and the habitats regulations, two key pieces of of legisl- legislation. They protect our most sensitive habitats, so from that perspective. You could almost argue that, or in fact, you could argue that they were being given tax relief on um, operations that were potentially causing serious environmental harm. Or if you take the case of Maboy, that has caused serious environmental harm, and it's not just—it's it's, also—it's also there's social implications here too, yeah. in terms of the costs of rectifying the problems that were not addressed, like. 
how, how many tens or hundreds of millions is it going to cost now to clean up Mabai Road? But at the time, yeah. here we were saying, or here here was the government saying, let's find a way of paying these guys money. I did listen to the, the was it Radio 4 podcast parade. Yeah. And I've, I've listened to that and, and I did myself and, and another councillor had went out and visited Joe before he passed away. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Do you think a salmon at the end of that might have been Joe making a making his presence felt saying keep up the good work? It, it, it was a, was a, an amazing coincidence in the fact that um, and, and, it, and it actually played played out very much that way because the, the interviewers were only over to do they were over to tidy up uh, so they were only there for a day the, the makers of the programme and while we were being interviewed and they were talking about not seeing this elusive salmon up one actually did <laughs> jump out of the river yeah. but, well, what you, when, and during your uh, your whistle blowing and, and fighting the system within Causeway Coast and Glens, you had a, a strange bedfellow, the name of Jim Allister. How how did that how did that come about? And and <coughs> Jim was uh, Jim was uh, he he owned a property immediately behind the the subject site for the hotel. Uh, and Jim's interest was looking at it was obviously nimbyism and not my backyard and and he had every right as anybody any individual has to fight uh, a planning application uh, and any objector has a right to be heard uh, so there was Jim was representing the the village that was immediately behind the hotel site uh, and his issue was a planning issue now he had he had taken or this group had taken a judicial review after the planning had been passed and, and while I tried to blow the whistle within the organisation first of all the chief executive, the solicitor, the assistant chief executive and a number of other individuals including organisations outside the council they all failed and this judicial review was going ahead and I knew that the evidence was failed there. Failed on what grounds? How does it well, get they, to that they, stage they, now? They, 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 failed, they failed first of all to protect the public purse. You're heading into court, you're spending money that is absolutely, there's no chance of winning this case. So you turn around and you ask for the decision to be coerced which should have which should have happened when they were caught. Uh, so so when I interjected in the case, it was nothing to do with the development of the hotel. I actually seconded the development of the hotel and went through planning. My objection was the sale of land. <coughs> Excuse me, and the use of, of uh, public uh, public assets public to enhance sure. a private developer, and that's what, essentially what it was. You had this eight hundred pound asset been given for a pound to a private developer. Uh, and that that's where hundred thousand. That's where that's where the distinct lines between Jim Allister and myself were. He was looking at a planning issue. I was looking at a asset disposal issue. But they they're one and the same subject. So how do you think the Honourable the Irish Society fit into all this? Then was that a front for other people, or was that just they got caught, or is that the the, the Honourable Irish Society? Uh, were a separate site. It's a different hotel site. So right. it's two separate sites, and their site was in the banks of the Ban in Coleraine. It was an old and testing laboratory site, but they needed access into it. They needed enhanced access. They said they wanted to build a hotel, uh, a boutique hotel, and to get that access, they needed a bit of council's land. Therefore, council had and basically what's called a ransom strip. Uh, the chief executive ignored. Uh, and, and I have the emails, so I've no problem saying this. The chief executive ignored the legal advice that was presented to him from actually a solicitor that was uh, working to the area city in Straban District Council at the time, and she was adamant. And in fact, she attached uh, the the methodology of how to dispose of a public asset with the email to uh, the chief executive and the assistant chief executive, and, and she said sarcastically, just in case you're not aware of how you do this. There's further emails that that said, "Look, let's avoid public clearing if we can." That's a, a that's a red what, flag. What does that mean? When they well, say well, avoid well you'd, you'd avoid public clearing. That's where uh, an asset would be like, open to the public to purchase. Now this this was so don't uh, give people a chance. Just make sure it goes to make sure that, that, that makes, a fair client. Exactly, that's exactly what it was. And and the asset uh, there was also buyback options supposed to be included in the agreement as well, the sale agreement, they were never included. The chief executive was solely responsible for this. So there were the and, and it's actually ironic that the chief executive was taking a land deal through the council for it was not his domain. Yeah. 